Hi, and welcome to our new video series where we're going to be playing around with Proxmox. And this is really in reason of a lot of the recent changes with vSphere and VMware with the Broadcom acquisition and the licenses are definitely going up in price. Uh, so a lot of companies are having to either go to Hyper-V or Proxmox or another uh, KVM or hypervisor. These are the two most popular, um, in my opinion. Uh, and there's already a lot of videos on my channel about Hyper-V, how to get that set up. So we're going to set up a home lab using Proxmox in this series. So this video is going to be the first in many. So in this video, we're actually going to be setting up our Proxmox virtual environment. We're going to be creating the USB installer and then installing it on a Dell laptop. So I'm installing it on a laptop here. So if you do have a actual server that you can install it at home, that will work just as well. Now be aware if you do install it on a laptop, you do need to have the laptop physically plugged in by cable um, or else it's not really gonna detect, you're not gonna be able to connect to your Wi-Fi. It is a very bare bones system. So you do need a ethernet cable. So I do have it plugged in. And I'm going to be showing you guys a few things uh, to watch out for as well. I had some hard uh, times during the first install of my Proxmox just because I wasn't aware of certain situations. Um, as I am still actually very new to Proxmox as well, this was my first deep dive into Proxmox. So I figured I would share my experiences with everyone. So let's actually go ahead and first set up our USB installer. So we are actually going to open up your favorite browser here and then go to proxmox.com. And then we are going to be downloading our Proxmox virtual environment. So you can click this learn more here and uh, you can learn a lot more about the actual Proxmox. There is a new version that just came out on April 9th, which is 8.4, uh, which adds a bunch of more features. So we're actually going to be downloading that. And we're going to be downloading the Proxmox Virtual Environment 8.4 ISO installer. It is not very big. It is only 1.5 gigs, which is awesome, especially compared to the Windows server uh, installers that are usually about like four to five gigs in size. So you don't need a huge USB. I still use the standard like eight gig USB that I have lying around, uh, but you're not going to need to go out and get a massive USB for these. Uh, Proxmox does also have some other things, so just make sure you're not downloading the backup server or the mail gateway, and you're actually downloading the virtual environment. Uh, so we're just going to click download. Now, I've already actually downloaded the file before the video here, so we didn't have to wait for the download. Uh, so if we go ahead and we actually open up the downloads folder here, we are going to see that I have the Proxmox uh, virtual environment 8.4 um, and we can see that we downloaded it today um, so that's fine so the next thing we're actually going to need to do is plug in our usb that we're going to want to put that image on and have rufus so you can download rufus pretty easily if you just open up a google page here and type in rufus you can easily find it. it's going to be the first link rufus.ie and you're going to be able to download that I usually just download the portable version. So if you actually go on the website here, there is a portable version here, Rufus 4.7p.exe. You can download that and use it. You don't have to download the standard one unless you want to install it, then definitely you can. Uh, so once we actually have that up here, uh, let me just go ahead and let's go back here and have that Proxmox. So we're going to make sure that we have our 8 gig USB or whatever size USB that you have here that you want to make the USB installer with. And our boot selection is going to be disk or ISO image. And we're going to hit select here. And we are going to select our Proxmox image. And then you're going to have some pop-ups here. It's going to say the image you have selected is a ISO hybrid but its creators have not made it compatible with the ISO file copy mode. As a result, DD image writing mode will be enforced. We can actually just go ahead and click OK to that. And then you're going to want to go ahead and click Start. And then it's going to warn you that it's going to erase everything that's on that USB. So if you have important files on that USB, please, before doing this, copy that over to your computer. 
because um, you will lose those. Um, so we're going to then click on OK. And it's going to delete everything and start actually writing the image to that USB. So what we're actually going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pause the recording here. And we're going to swap over to my laptop here to actually install that on. All right, so I do have my laptop connected here. So we're just going to boot up the laptop with the USB plugged in. Now, what you're going to have to do is either press F2 or F12. This will depend on the laptop that you have. Usually you'll see it at the top there. Like we just saw, it quickly pops up F12 for boot options. Kind of depends on the model of a laptop. Now, we actually have the boot. Uh, the boot mode set to UEFI with the secure boot off for this computer here. And we are going to boot to the USB storage device here. So we're going to hit enter. Now, before you actually boot up, make sure that you have the USB plugged in. If you don't have the USB plugged in when you turn it on and you hit F12, plugging the USB in afterwards, your computer will not recognize it. You'll have to restart and then hit that F12 again, just in case you guys have never uh, done a USB installer. That step is very important or else you're just not going to see your USB storage device. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to hit enter here on the USB storage device. Now what you're going to see here is invalid partition table. This is OK. We can actually go ahead and hit enter and you're going to be brought up to your Proxmox. Welcome to Proxmox virtual environment. And here you can actually go ahead and install Proxmox Graphical or install Proxmox Terminal UI. Because we are just beginning with Proxmox, I like to do the install through the graphical interface. It is a lot easier for beginners. Once you get more use to the different options of Proxmox, definitely the Terminal UI is going to be sufficient because you're going to be able to do a lot through the APIs and the web environment. So let's just go ahead and let's pick install Proxmox virtual environment graphical. And we're going to hit enter here. And what that's going to do is going to load the installer. Uh, so this sometimes can take a few seconds here. It's just loading up. You can actually just ignore a lot of this. It's going to seem like it's doing stuff. Uh, and it's just actually loading in here. You're going to see that it does some DHCP requests. And that is going to be to set up the network on the Proxmox system. Now, I am aware that this is kind of small, but there's nothing on there that's going to be actually handy for us just yet. Uh, we should see it come up pretty shortly here. And... Uh, one of the main things to pay attention is if you don't have that network cable plugged in right away, you're, you will have some issues setting up the network. And by default, it looks like it might work. It's going to let you set up these static addresses. Uh, but if it doesn't actually pick up that network, uh, it will usually not work. And also, if you just don't know your network settings, this will just make sure that the preloaded settings are working great for you. So we're just going to wait for this to pop up here. Like I said, it can take a few moments here. Alrighty, so now it is up. So here we're going to get our end user license agreement here. So we can actually just go ahead and click I agree. And then it's going to ask us what is our target hard disk here. So make sure that you target the hard drive or the partition that you want to install to. I already know that this is the correct one. We are going to go ahead and click on next. And then here it's going to ask you for your country, time zone and keyboard layout. Country is Canada. And then the time zone here for me, let's just put that to the correct one here. Uh, if uh, there it is, Toronto, and then the keyboard layout will be US English. We're going to click on next here. And then this here is going to be your password. Now you're going to have to remember this password. This will be used to log in into the web interface. And also if you want to log into the shell on the actual laptop or the machine that you're installing it, you will have to remember this. So this is a very, very important password to remember and make sure that it is secure. 
Again, this is a home lab environment for the most part, unless you're setting this up for work. So just make sure that you follow any policies that you have um, at your work there. And then we are going to go ahead and put in our email address. Uh, and I'm going to put in the one that everyone of you guys actually know. It's the one that we use in multiple videos here. And we're going to click on next. And then this is where you will actually notice if something is wrong. So if by chance you actually see the gateway of 192.168.100.1, you might have an issue. And especially if you see the DNS server point to 127.0.0.1, you might have an issue with your DHCP leases or anything like that because the Proxmox wasn't able to detect and get an address. So it will actually point itself as the DNS. Now, of course, if you want your Proxmox to be its own DNS, that could work. Um, but just make sure that you actually get some legitimate addresses that you would actually be expecting from your DHCP environment. For me, this is actually looks really good. And then the host name, we are just going to want to put something here. So what I like to do is I'm just going to put proxmox.jacked.ca because that is my domain here. And then we have the IP address. Make sure that you note that down. Now it will actually pop up on the screen as well afterwards. So you don't actually have to worry about that as much. Um, and then we will see down here, it is the gateway. Make sure that that is your actual gateway and then make sure that that is your actual DNS. For me, the gateway and the DNS is actually going to be the same in my home lab environment. Um, if you want it to assign a very specific IP address, you could change this. In my case, 132 is exactly what I want it to be. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to click on next here. And this is basically going to make sure that everything is correct. You're just going to go over all of these things. Everything looks good for me. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on install and it's going to go ahead and start the install. Now this can take a little bit of time. It is actually not that lengthy comparative to a Windows server install or anything like that, but we're going to go ahead and pause the recording and we're going to come back once it's all done. All right, so we just missed it here. So basically at the end of the screen, at the end of the install, it's going to tell you that it's going to be rebooting and to actually remove the installation media. So we have just removed the installation media here. So we should see the actual server boot up. And here we have the option here of what we actually want to boot up to. So here we are actually going to go ahead and it actually auto selects it if you take too long but you're going to select the Proxmox virtual environment and it's going to go ahead and boot up here. We should see a message to actually connect to the web page pretty shortly here. We're just going to wait, let us do its thing. And there it is. So it is actually telling us to go to our IP address at the port 8006 and it gives us our Proxmox login. So actually, if we just take a little second here, and log in to our server with our password that we put in. Hopefully we actually remember that password and we can actually go in and explore the environment here. Now I definitely much prefer because of my experience with Proxmox is to go to that web page, uh, but you can definitely still uh, make sure that you have a internet connection. If you just ping the quad eight here, we can see that we actually do get a response. So that is actually perfect. So let's go ahead and let's once again, let's just swap over to our web environment here to see what that looks like. All right, so let me just swap over here. So we have our web page open. So when you first go to your IP address at that port 8006, you will get a warning message. It might look a little bit different depending on the browser that you're using you're going to see your connection isn't private. You're going to see your IP address. And that's because by default, Proxmox is using a self-signed certificate. So all we need to do is click on advanced. 
and then continue to that web page. And our web page is actually going to load up here and it's going to ask for a username or password. Now you're going to be asking, but we never set up a username. We put in an email address, but not a username. We only put in a password. That's because the username by default is going to be root. And then the password is going to be that password that we put in at the beginning. And let's go ahead and let's click on login here. And it's going to also tell you that you don't have a valid subscription. Now you actually do not need a subscription to use Proxmox. That is just an additional service, an additional value that they actually provide. If you do want to actually subscribe to Proxmox and get support and other things like that, you can do that. But we're just going to go ahead and click on OK here. And we actually have our Proxmox server set up here. So you're going to be able to see everything up on the side here. You can see all your permissions, the users. So you can go ahead and create other users for your coworkers or maybe other people in your home to be able to log into the system. Um, you're also going to be able to create API tokens. You're going to be able to uh, set up a two factor if you need to. You can set up groups, roles. Um, you can set up a bunch of different things. You can also set up firewall rules as well. Um, so there are a bunch and then you can see here the summary we can actually see here like I said in the uh, previous video here Proxmox is very very easy to run so as you can see this laptop only has four CPUs we're only using one percent uh, it only has eight gigs of RAM I'm going to be adding another stick of eight just to be able to do a little bit more with it but by default, as you can see, our Proxmox is only running at 19% memory. Now, the other version that I had tried earlier on, 8.3, did use a little bit less. So this version is a little bit heavier, but even then, 1.4 gigs out of the 7.6, we're only using, utilizing just under 20% here. It is not much. And as you can see, the storage... It is using a whopping just 1% of our storage. It is two, just over two gigs, just under three gigs of space taken by the actual Proxmox environment. So this is fantastic for home labs. You can host your Windows VMs. You can host your Linux VMs on here. And it's going to be really good because you don't need a lot of power to run this. So that's going to be it for this video. I suggest you guys kind of explore and look around. In the next video, we're actually going to be setting up our first virtual machine on here. We're going to be setting up a Ubuntu server on here. Um, I just It's kind of the easiest to set up. You don't need a whole lot. Um, the ISO is quite small. And then if there is a want for it, we can also show how to install a Windows server on here as well maybe a Ubuntu desktop and also a Windows 11 VM as well. If you guys would like to see anything else, please let me know in the comment section down below. We're also going to be exploring um, the APIs as well and a lot of different things related to Proxmox, how we can actually download ISOs directly on the Proxmox system so we don't actually have to upload them, uh, which is a very nice little feature that it has. So if you guys liked this video, please hit that like button. Also, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.